All right. Hi, and welcome to the Google Summer of Code FreeBSD Office Hours. Um, my name is Rukowski. I am a marketing coordinator at the FreeBSD Foundation. And I thought um, we're going to jump into uh, talking about Google Summer of Code itself. But I wanted to start off with just a really brief overview of uh, FreeBSD and the project itself. So I'm going to quickly share my screen here. All right. Uh, so I kind of wanted to discuss just the basics of FreeBSD itself. So I'm going to break it down into three different parts. Um, the first part to talk about is FreeBSD itself. Uh, FreeBSD is a Unix-like operating system. Uh, it descended from Unix uh, Berkeley, um, which also in turn descended from Unix itself back in the 1970s. Um, the second part is the FreeBSD project, which is the open source community um, that was developed in 1993. Um, and it has hundreds of committers and thousands of contributors all around the world. I'm going to break that down, the difference between contributor and a commuter, uh, uh, committer in a second. Um, I just wanted to set the basics first. And finally, the foundation, which is a 501c3 um, nonprofit. We're registered in Boulder, Colorado, and we are 100% supported by donations. Um, and we use those donations to help support the FreeBSD project. Um, and the community. So what is FreeBSD? I mentioned it's a free and open source operating system, but it's also a complete operating system. So it not only has a kernel, but it also has a user land, uh, documentation, and tools all included in the operating system. Um, it's a great, I don't want to say learner operating system, but it's a great operating system to learn on because you get a deal with each component of the operating system while you're learning. Um, and it's been in co uh, continuous development and use for over 29 years now, um, which is great because it's been around. And a lot of people have experiences with either using it as an individual, um, using it as part of what they've done through work at corporations, uh, or personal development experience with it. Um, and this shows in how often you may have actually used it in the past. So if you have an iPhone um, or Apple computer, uh, if you have a Sony PS4 or PS5, you are using operating systems that are either um, based on or pull from uh, FreeBSD in some way. And also if you've ever streamed on Netflix, um, if you've planned a vacation on Trivago, you are relying on servers that are running on FreeBSD. So you probably have more interactions with FreeBSD than uh, you would think in your day to day. Um, here's just a list of some more brands um, that you might, this is in all the brands, but these are some of the corporations that do use FreeBSD. Um, so you might, you might uh, work with these a little bit more than, uh, than you thought. So why FreeBSD? Uh, to start off with, you can't mention FreeBSD without the community. Um, it's a really friendly, approachable community. Um, it's not hard to become a contributor because FreeBSD is always looking for people to participate. And so it's very easy to approach and it's also very easy to contribute to. Um, part of being around for 29 years is the extensive documentation that has been created. Um, this is great because we have not only the FreeBSD handbook, which outlines stuff from setting up FreeBSD for the first time to semi-advanced networking settings to advanced um, firewall settings for uh, systems administration. Um, and if you're doing something on FreeBSD, it's likely that someone has tried to do the same thing before you. And it's very likely that there's something written about it. And if not, you can contribute to it by writing documentation on what you're doing. So it's a, it's a continuously growing uh, set of documentation that's really expansive. Um, some of the reasons why brands rely on FreeBSD is it is in a consistent development and release process and tied to its security, its stability, and the reliability of FreeBSD itself. Um, it, that's the reason why companies such as Netflix rely on FreeBSD for their work. Um, and also it's it, there's a lot of support for different sets, uh, different architectures. So you don't need the most modern 
um, set up to run FreeBSD or to work on FreeBSD. It works on a huge range of architectures. And the final thing I kind of want to mention, because I think it's very pertinent to Google Summer of Code, is the two-clause BSD license, which means that if you're writing your own code, um, this license will not restrict what you can do with that code. Um, so if you're writing code as part of uh, Google Summer of Code, it, it's not being restricted by the license. Um, to go a little bit more in depth, I know I mentioned the difference between contributors and committers. Um, FreeBSD project follows a model that was set up originally at Berkeley, um, which is there are thousands of contributors and they can write documentation, submit changes um, and improvements through problem reports. Um, through those problem reports, the committers can make the changes that have been recommended or their own changes to the source tree itself. And this is really great because as a part of how FreeBSD functions, as, the, as a part of how the project functions, there's this natural sense of mentorship because committers will mentor the contributors that are new to the project, whether it's how to get involved or how to submit a problem report for an issue that they're having or how to eventually become a committer. You have this process that's already in place of mentoring people who are just getting introduced to uh, FreeBSD. And there is no dictator for life um, for FreeBSD. So if you're just becoming involved now, you can have a huge impact. You don't have to be making your 750th problem report uh, to make a notable impact. You can do it on your first one. So before I hand it off, um, I just wanted to touch on some of the reasons that FreeBSD is a really great option for Google Summer of Code. Um, I mentioned the community uh, and I'll continue to do so because I think it's really important to join a community that is invested in, the, in your success. And the mentors that will be working with uh, Google Summer of Code might, many have past experiences uh, with Google Summer of Code itself, but all of them have experienced with the FreeBSD mentorship culture that already exists. So they're already used to being invested in people's success and helping them develop their own ideas. Um, FreeBSD is a great way to learn systems programming and study just operating systems in general. I didn't come from a technical background um, when I first started with the FreeBSD Foundation, uh, but through what I had learned in my limited interactions with FreeBSD, I was able to actually directly apply that to when I learned Python down the road, because I, I was able to uh, deal with uh, a non-graphical uh, user interface uh, file system. So stuff like that is where FreeBSD, working with FreeBSD will directly impact um, any work that you do in future on operating systems, but really anything that, that you're dealing with um, uh, a complete operating system. Because as I mentioned, like the, the fact that it's a complete operating system means there's a whole variety of areas you can work on and contribute to, which is another big thing because your, your contributions can make a notable impact in so many different ways. Um, it's both a big project in that there's a lot of places that you contribute to, and also somewhat small in the sense that you're not working through this insane preset hierarchy of a massive corporation where, you know, in two years, you would never be able to make a notable impact. Just from the get-go, when you get started with FreeBSD, you're able to make a lasting notable impact, which is really awesome and I think very unique to FreeBSD. And the last thing I want to touch on is uh, with the FreeBSD community being the way that it is, a lot of the founders of BSD, uh, FreeBSD are still involved. And the fact that they're still approachable, um, you can still contact them is really unique in my mind. Uh, it's really uh, unique amongst operating systems. Um, so I'm gonna hang, hand this over to uh, Joe. Uh, I can talk a little bit more about the Google Summer of Code um, uh, uh, program as a whole. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. 
Okay, so I'm going to try and share my screen. Okay, so that's fine. I think we can see it. So uh, thanks, Drew. So Drew gave you a little bit of information about FreeBSD itself, and maybe I'll talk a little bit about Google Summer of Code and a little bit about FreeBSD and Google Summer of Code and things like applying. And probably the most interesting thing for potential uh, contributors this year is um, a brief overview of the, the mentors and the potential projects. So I guess we can start at the beginning and maybe, uh, Anne, if you can slide to the, the next slide. Uh, we can can say folks little, see that? So maybe while you're doing that, I'll, I can just talk. I mean, slide yeah, yeah, that's good. Yep. Yep. So maybe we'll start at the beginning. What is Google Summer of Code? Uh, Drew touched on it a little bit. Um, I think Google Summer of Code is a pretty unique and uh, uh, great opportunity for newcomers to open source where they get paired up with uh, mentoring organizations that work on open source. FreeBSD is one of those mentoring organizations. And uh, basically, you work with somebody that's really uh, uh, experienced in some area, in, in this case with FreeBSD development. Um, and you get mentorship and you get paid for it. So it's a really good opportunity. Uh, and Google Summer of Code has been going on since 2005. And uh, I say on the slide here, I, can we see the slides now? I, yep, I'm getting them. Hold on. Okay, so it, yeah, so it was just, I didn't know if I was on the wrong screen. Um, Google says that they've uh, connected more than 18,000 students and, and I say the word students right now, but I'll, I'll say a little bit more about students from a whole bunch of different countries with a whole bunch of different mentors from a whole bunch of different countries. And they've produced uh, over 40 million lines of code from 746 different uh, open source organizations. And if you want to read more about these stats, you can go to the Google Summer of Code URL there. That's the g.co slash gsoc. Um, so uh, uh, students uh, is what they describe on their page, but uh, it's now um, a big change with Google Summer of Code where you don't have to be a student. So before you had to be a university student or a recent graduate, um, they've opened things up. So anybody interested in open source that's at least 18 and um, yeah, there's certain eligibility criteria. Uh, so you can't be, you can't, uh, in certain circumstances applied to Google Summer of Code in the past, or you can't be uh, a seasoned open source developer, but anybody else is eligible to apply. Uh, there's a little bit more flexibility with the projects. You can uh, work on a medium-sized project, which is about 175 hours, or you can work on a large project that's uh, 350 hours. And there's also more flexibility in the time. So you can work on the, the, the default is still to work on a 12 week project, but if both a contributor and their mentor agree to extend things out for 22 weeks, that's now possible. And so FreeBSD has been contributing to uh, Google Summer of Code since the very beginning in 2005. And a quick scan of the past projects show that uh, uh, 249, uh, FreeBSD Google Summer of Code projects have been accepted over the years. And so <clears throat> maybe we can talk a little bit about the, the resources that both Google and we publish for potential contributors. Um, and maybe if you could click on that top link, we can browse through the, the vast information that they have uh, on the Google Summer of Code page and try to focus on the most important information. I could, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, so if you go to uh, the Google Summer of Code page. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, so our uh, tech rehearsal didn't include quite all of this, so apologies for the, <laughs> the holes in that. Okay, um, what part do you want me to get to here? The main page, the program? Yeah, the top one, the, just the Google Summer of Code page. Um, and like I said, there's an awful lot of information there and, um, the most important information I think is way down at the bottom of the page where um, they talk about the timeline. So there we go. Yeah, at the very bottom, there's the 2022. 
I think there was a little bit more if you go all the way to the bottom. Ah. Here, I'll just go to the timeline. There we go. There you go. So all this important information. Um, right now, between March 7th and April 3rd, we're in the, uh, meant, uh, the, the stage where potential Google Summer of Code contributors should be reaching out to the mentoring organizations and more specifically the mentors in discussing potential projects to see if, um, if both uh, the mentor and the, the contributor are a good match and the project uh, matches the skill sets. So an important upcoming deadline is April 4th. That's where, uh, not necessarily deadline, but uh, uh, next important date is April 4th when the application period for potential co contributors starts. And then you have till April 19th to get those uh, uh, applications in. And so there's a couple other deadlines. Um, I won't read through all of them, but maybe if we go back to the, to the main page and and there's a help link at the very bottom. And on that page, there's the contributor and mentor guide. And then the read the Google Summer of Code contributor student guide. And there's a lot of good information here about the application process. So talking about uh, choosing the right organization, uh, finding the right project and, and details about writing your proposal. We have some more. So I definitely recommend that you read this if you're thinking about applying. And we also uh, at FreeBSD have some important information specific to FreeBSD about applying. Um, you can reach that if you go back to <clears throat> the main Google Summer of Code page. Oh, okay, great. You're faster than me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, we, there's one other step that I was going to go through, but it's pretty straightforward to get there. If you go on the main page, you can list all the mentoring organizations, and there's a bit of information about FreeBSD's application. Okay, same page. Get there. Yeah, and then the easiest, oh, it's FreeBSD's right there. And there's some interesting or helpful links on the side about contacting us, contacting us. So if you have any questions about uh, applying with FreeBSD, those are the ways to get in touch with us. And then if you go down a little bit at the bottom, there's a link there, the wiki link. And from here, you can get to all the information. There's a link to the page that uh, Anne was just uh, on. There's a link to... Uh, Yep, that's a useful one. And if back on the wiki too, we list all the past projects. So if you want to get an idea of what you'll be doing with a project, you can see all the projects from 2005 to 2021. And uh, there's lots of good information there. And perhaps at this stage, another really important place to go is the uh, project list. And I'm going to bring that up quickly too, so I can see it better. Uh, too many buttons to go. Let's see. There it is. Okay. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see all the different uh, potential projects. And for each project, we uh, list the type of skills that you'll need. So if you need on the top uh, a potential project that I see unified kernel tracing interface. Uh, it tells you that you need to be advanced uh, C program for this one. You need to have a bit of understanding with the kernel or you have to be very eager and willing to learn lots. Um, uh, you should definitely talk to the mentor in this case, if this is a, a project that you're interested in. Mark is a very active uh, for BSD developer. I know he works on a variety of different things in the kernel. I know there's another project down there um, for syscaller, which is a kernel fuzzer that I know Mark has been working with and very interested. It's uh, useful for finding bugs in the kernel. We also list uh, some midterm like uh, deliverables. So uh, what you should be working at at certain stages or what you have should have accomplished at a certain stage. 
Uh, we let you know what we think the duration of the project should be and how difficult it should be. Uh, maybe we go to some of the other projects. The second one on the list is uh, mentored by uh, Warner Losh, also another very active uh, uh, committer to FreeBSD. I think Warner would, Warner would also be an excellent choice for a mentor. I think he's got more commits than anybody in the history of FreeBSD and he's like, he's super accessible. Um, uh, so I think it'd be a really good opportunity to work with somebody like Mark or Warner. Uh, the next one on the list, another really good mentor. I think another uh, committer that has, uh, maybe he's in the number two or something with number of commits and also very accessible. He's on IRC all the time. Um, and who else do we have here? Seymour Warner. And I see somebody that we have here who's, oh, and I should mention that Warner's on the core team, Mark's on the core team, so they're very heavily involved with FreeBSD. I see uh, Ed, who's here, an employee with the foundation, who's also on the core team, also very accessible. George Neville Neal on the core team. So this is a really uh, good opportunity to work with some really skilled people in the project. So um, I think that's all from me, but maybe we could open it up for specific questions. So I know there's some people here um, that are interested in applying for FreeBSD that might have questions. We'll be looking on IRC to see if there's anybody asking questions there. Um, so uh, the floor is open for questions. And I see there's some sad questions. There's something in the chat. Oh, uh, it was just a saying that the slides were not showing, but then they are showing. Ed, do you want to talk a little more about like your project specifically and, and how that works, what you're looking for, that kind of thing? Oh, we have a question, so let's do that first. Let's check out the chat. Is, let's see. Is there any potential mentor that I'd like to work on the eBPF JIT for ARC64? Um, so I know Andy's, uh, uh, he works on an ARM64. Um, let's see on the list here. Um, I'm just gonna search for EPDF. Yeah, Ryan is listed as the mentor on that right now um but uh um yeah i think that's something that um uh, that andy would be um uh, andy is certainly qualified to uh to mentor uh -huh. yeah so um we can uh i think andy's uh listed as a mentor on some of the other projects so you can get his his email address there i think it's just andrew at fruitbsd.org yeah. Um, and if, you know, if you have more questions about uh, a mentor for this project, we can certainly um, dig a bit more. Um, so make sure you stay in touch with us if you're really interested in that project. Just going to check IRC. FreeBSD at Geekshed, that's where, oh, we can also look in the Summer of Code channel. Yeah, so far, no questions there, it seems. Oh, is there another question? Oh, wait, there's a question in IRC now. I see a question from somebody oh, on IRC, you said. Mm -hmm. so they are considering applying for an advanced difficulty C project, but their skills are moderate. 
uh, do you think that will be a problem? Um, I think you should definitely talk to the mentor. Uh, it depends, I think. I, I wouldn't necessarily exclude yourself. Um, yeah. I mean, I think um, details are, are, are important here. So uh, I guess the short answer is it's possible that, that you would, it might be more challenging. You might learn a lot. It might be a good experience, but the best person to talk to would be the expert on the, on the specific project. Yeah, there are certainly some projects that, um, that are going to need um, uh, really, um, really advanced uh, C skills to be able to uh, usefully make, make progress and, and, um, and have it be a uh, valuable and, and um, uh, sensible experience um, for, for a student. Um, but certainly, yeah, I would suggest contacting the individual mentor, um, and you can CC um, or discuss with discuss with us on on a specific project um, as well to kind of get a sense of um, of which one or of of how just how um, how difficult it, it would likely be. Um, do you know which which project um, this is in reference to? Uh, oh, so I see the questions from Jake. Jake and I have been speaking uh, oh, okay. the email. So it was a project. I know Jake was originally interested in a project that we dug a little deeper. Um, it was related to Beehive, but Peter Bre Grehan added that project a little while ago. And so he got in touch or I got in touch with him and we determined that it probably wasn't the best project any longer. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I know Jake's very interested and uh, I'm confident that we could find a project um, that matches your skill set, Jake. And um, so uh, keep keep in touch with us. We'll find one that that matches uh, something you're interested in. Yeah, I think um, uh, certainly uh, even if that uh, it was the VGA emulation, I think from Beehive, right, was the original project. Yeah. Um, even if that one is not um, uh, not necessarily. Uh, a suitable project anymore. Um, there's certainly, if, if Beehive um, in general is, is of interest, um, there's certainly lots of um, lots of interesting work that can be done in, in Beehive. Um, we can we can definitely find something useful um, to uh, to investigate there. And John Baldwin might be um, a good person to contact. He is listed as a, as a mentor. It's uh, J H B. Um, jhb at freebsd.org i'm pretty sure he's listed on some other projects here yeah i mentioned him uh he's the let's see one second one down there yeah there's beehive debug server enhancements that's an advanced uh c uh skill set requirement but uh let's see Do we have any other Beehive projects? None listed at this time, I don't think, but we can talk to John, see if he has any other, other ideas for Beehive. But as uh, was mentioned earlier, I know we have one um, former co-mentor here and Ed's also been a mentor before. Do you wanna talk a little bit about how that works, the process you use to mentor your students and what, what that's like? I'll let, um, how do you take it, uh, take it first if, uh, if willing. Oh, can you hear me everyone? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Audio problems. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I again would like to uh, say a good uh, well 
uh, day to everyone. Uh, I don't know if it is uh, morning, evening, afternoon, depending on the time zones. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I can elaborate uh, on my own experience. Yes, uh, it's been a rich experience for myself. Uh, the couple of times that I uh, mentored or co-mentored uh, uh, the uh, like a few ideas that uh, I put out there. Um, I think for myself, well, I needed to uh, learn a few things uh, before and uh, while doing the mentorship because uh, sometimes you know you have this idea that you put there and then later um, like you you will see how deeply it can touch the project and. Uh, you need to gather some information for your students when they ask questions. And, um, you know, this is a whole uh, journey for itself on that front. Um, on the other front, it's, it's also, you know, may, at least from my, my own personal experience, the ideas that I put out there is the things that I would like to see in FreeBSD for, you know, personal, personal use or, you know, professional use. It can be both. Uh, and so, you know, it normally happens that time is limited and, and we, we uh, cannot implement everything that we want uh, on our own. So it's, you know, it's a good way, I think, to uh, share that journey with someone. Uh, you basically transfer the knowledge that you gathered or the things that you learn through uh, the whole experience and then uh pass it on uh that makes you know more people working on the thing that you like so it's <laughs> kind of um uh, uh double beneficial uh yeah so i don't know if i could answer your question uh, detailed enough <laughs> I, uh i'm open to you know tell more if if there is more detailed uh, questions i think Thanks. that that's very helpful yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, one useful um, uh, thing you might want to just pass on is how how the interaction with the student um, works on like a day to day or week to week basis, um, and that's mm -hmm. going to differ for different mentors and students. Um, I think that's that's one of the useful um, important aspects of of contacting um, contacting mentors in the early. Um, early stages of GSOC and get a get a handle on exactly how the relationship would work and and you know how um, how frequently you would communicate and and how whether it's going to be um, IRC channels and text or um, Slack or Google Meet calls or Jitsi or whatever the case might be um, what sort of approach you would take to, to keep in touch um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that uh, Addy, on how, how that process worked um, yeah, so uh, I, in my experiences, I mean, we, we had tried different things. I mean, uh, once I, I was uh, the mentor on my own, once I was co-mentoring. So it's, uh, it's actually quite a, uh, it can be quite a challenge uh, in my experience, like uh, especially if the time zone uh, difference is big. Um, so the way that uh, like we tried uh, several approaches, um, one thing that is, of course, very helpful is, you know, some uh, medium like Slack or, you know, uh, because uh, it's also uh, good to notice that uh, the students that uh, come on the project, it's, uh, it can be uh, one of the earliest uh, professional experience they have. So, like, some of them might have never actually professionally worked uh, in a big IT project. Uh, so, previously as a software project itself. Uh, can give that experience to them as well as uh, the uh, previous the related experience. So they can learn, you know, uh, uh, how people could communicate on a big project on a daily basis or weekly basis. So, uh, yeah, for my own experience, like, I think we had, uh, we at first, we, we, we started with uh, like a daily uh, communication, but that was, uh, that was proven to be not so <laughs> helpful because uh, some days are not really good days for you know people to uh, call it a productive day uh, and you know it's also important for uh, for us to make the student not feel so you know uh, unproductive so we we I, what we did was uh, uh, 
uh, to basically give a longer uh, interval between every uh, call. So there can be more questions, there can be more things for them to present. Um, and yeah, it kind of, uh, this regular uh, contact was helpful on, on many uh, bases. And the interval was also helpful for myself because I could have more time, you know, uh, seeing the challenges that the student had and uh, you know if I could be help uh, myself I could do that or I could you know ask around and uh, do what you know a mentor is supposed to do like provide the knowledge when you're asked the question uh, yeah I hope I could answer it Ed. <laughs> it's maybe a little yeah, bit I mean, more oh sorry oh, go, go ahead, ahead. Yeah. no go ahead <laughs> I was just going to say for Jake's question, uh, so Peter Green, I'm pretty sure the original uh, creator of Beehive uh, responded uh, to me recently, and he said a little bit more about uh, why that project might not be as useful as it was when he, when he added it a few years ago. He said that all uh, important Beehive guests are now EFI capable. And so, um, yes. Uh, Jake says, I'm certainly eager to learn. I was more interested in Beehive project because the BGA aspect, uh, and he enjoys tinkering with graphics. Uh, any potential graphics related projects? Well, we'll certainly um, ask around and, and get back to you on that. Jake. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, fortuitous maybe to bring that up um, because um, uh, the VT console um, uh, is certainly something that um, has some graphics related uh, needs as well. Um, uh, the, um, the VT console replaced the, the, the legacy system console um, or has been in the process of replacing it for 10 years or so. Um, and there's still some, um, some outstanding functionality that existed in the old one that um, uh, that doesn't yet exist. Uh, so for example, there's um, VGL, um, libvgl is a graphics library for use on the console. There's a few applications that used it. It's not all that widely used, but, uh, but there are some, some applications that made use of it and it's not supported by, um, by VT. Um, and there's also um, just sort of general usability, um, usability improvements that, that could be made. So that's one area where, um, uh, where an interest in graphics may uh, may have an outlet, uh, so that's something else we can look at. Cool. Jake also says uh, he was originally interested in a project uh, called Unified Kernel Tracing Interface. Yeah, that was the one that we had up earlier on the screen, the Mark of Mark's, right? Um, oh, right. Oh, that was the advanced one. Yeah. So we can talk to Mark. Um, uh, Jake also says that. Uh, he, he's eager to learn um, and he's worried about wasting the time of a mentor. Well, I think, you know, it's, it, it's a good balance. Like you want to be independent, but this is, this is what's special about Google Summer of Code. The, the mentors have signed up. They, they dedicated themselves to, they've dedicated some of their, their time in order to interact with you. So this is the time not to feel too bad. I mean, <laughs> of course, there's always a balance. Um, you want to learn to be somewhat independent, but at the same time, I'm repeating myself a little, but these mentors have signed up and dedicated some of their time. So that's what's, I think, a little special about Google Summer of Code, and you get paid. <laughs> so it's a, it's a good opportunity. And I don't think you should feel too bad about taking some of their time. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to say earlier. So that covers it. Um, in that, you know, this is really the folks who are who are signed up as mentors really know what they're getting into, and they are prepared and willing and and ready to help. So, you know, especially now is a great time to ask questions and find out if you know it's the right fit for everybody. Um, so, you know, definitely reach out. And if, as Joe said many times, you know, if you don't see something there, or you're having trouble getting a hold of somebody, let us know. Let the admins know, um, and we'll do our best to make the connections we need to make. Yeah, or or if a potential mentor is not responsive, that's you know you learn something. 
it's probably better to move on to a different mentor. But, but again, uh, not, uh, not disagreeing with what Ann said, get in touch with us too, because maybe there's something going on, maybe there's some special circumstance, but this is a, yeah, I mean, there's some videos on the Google Summer of Code site where they uh, talk about how important this stage is right now where potential students talk to potential mentors. Uh, students that leave this to the very end uh, don't have as a high a success rate of completing their project as those students who start early. So the sooner the better to find the right mentor and the right project. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, I think that's probably a good a good overview of of uh, what Google Summer of Code and FreeBSD is like um, and the projects and the people. Uh, if anybody else here has anything to add, now is a good time to do that. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I think, um, you know, thank you for those who are here and definitely reach out to the admins with questions, reach out to the mentors with questions. Um, we're here and, you know, like I said, we all signed up because we wanna help and we wanna make sure that you know, everyone has a great Google Summer Code experience. Um, it's great that it's not just students. So if you're new to open source, you know, FreeBSD, as, as Ruth said, it's the full package. So <laughs> it's a great place to start. Um, and yeah, I think since there, oh wait, is there another question? Let's see. Uh, Yes, you can talk to Joe. Um, we have an admins, um, Summer of Code admins email that goes to uh, all of the admins. There are three of us uh, this year and they'll be able to uh, get in, you know, if you're not hearing back from mentor, they'll be able to get involved in that and figure out what the next step should be. Absolutely. So that's I mean, a place to go. I think it's happened in the past where, you know, extenuating circumstances come up for mentors and, and uh, I think mentors have switched mid project. We, we're always uh, ready to try and solve any problems you have. Uh, maybe we should also give a warning. I think uh, Drew touched on this a little bit, but FreeBSD is a bit of a, a tinkering OS. So uh, the warning is careful when you start installing FreeBSD on your laptop or something or your, your embedded device, it, you, you start to get that itch and that's how you get uh, sucked in. You start. Uh, realizing that you can, you know, have the power to fix things on your own. And that's, that's how it started with me. And I think that's how it started with a lot of people. You start, I started messing in the ports tree. Like I wanted some applications to work for graduate school and some other applications on my laptop and uh, became a ports committer. Um, and I've heard similar stories from a lot of different uh, committers, whether it's even documentation or, or the base system. Um, a lot of uh, Google Summer of Code students, um, I, I think, Madi, am I correct in saying that you were originally a Google Summer of Code student and you moved on? I know we have a couple com uh, committers now that started off as uh, Google Summer of Code contributors. I started with uh, with uh, the ports tree. Uh, I, 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 have, uh, I have been a, uh, like I have started the GSOC things with, uh, being a co-mentor, but uh, okay. I have started with ports, uh, ports 3 as well. Okay. Yeah, we did have a few um, uh, folks who were um, uh, GSOC students um, and then later um, became committers and, uh, and also GSOC mentors. Um, I don't remember exactly who offhand, but. Yeah, I think there was even one last year. It's just. Yeah, I just thought I would end with that warning. Carefully, you might get addicted. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. So, all right. Well, again, thank you all for being here. And um, we're looking forward to folks uh, reaching out and applications and hope that we get to work with everyone uh, for Summer of Code this year. So um, we'll be, this is recorded. So we'll be able to uh, have access to it if you have other questions or if you wanna watch it again, um, it'll be up on the, uh, the FreeBC Project YouTube channel. So you can find it there. So um, yeah, thank you everyone for being here and uh, happy coding, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. we hope that you, you have a great, uh, a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.